Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video we're going to be reviewing the Through My Eyes Colourpop Times I Love Sarah E collection. They came out with a palette and a lip bundle. I do want to discuss the prices of the product before we get started. So you actually can purchase the entire PR kit on Colourpop's website. That is something they've been doing recently I've noticed that they've been offering like the actual PR bundle that influencers get in the mail um, available for sale on their website. That does retail for $50 though. Um, you do get the palette and the lip bundle plus a kaleidoscope. But if you don't want the kaleidoscope or you don't need to have like the whole PR kit, you want just the palette and the lip bundle, um, you can get them together as a set for $39, which is what I did. Or you can buy the palette individually for $23. Or you can just buy the lip bundle for $16. Um, it does come with two mattes and a glossy lip. Each matte does retail for $6.50 each and then the gloss does retail for $6. And yeah, that's the price of everything. Let's go ahead and jump into the eyeshadow. We're going to be doing our eyes first today per usual. My eyes are already primed with some concealer and translucent powder. First of all, the outside packaging in the palette, the like cute carton that it comes in, is gorgeous. I love that it looks like an actual kaleidoscope. I think it's so cool. These are Karen's actual eyes. Um, if you don't know, I love sorry is Karen. Anyways, but I just I love it. I love that's Karen's actual eyes. I think the packaging looks so cool. I wish the actual palette looked like the outside packaging. But that's just my personal opinion. I still think this does look kind of cool. It looks like the actual inside of the kaleidoscope. But I don't know. I kind of just wish that this was on this, you know? I just think that'd be so cool of a palette with, like, your own eyes on it. But whatever. Here is the inside of the Through My Eyes palette. As you see, we do have our warm tones, our neutral tones, and some pops of color in here. Let's go ahead and just jump into this palette. I definitely want to use this shimmery green emerald shade and also the matte green shade because I think they're so pretty. Of course, I do have to use the more neutral shades for my transition area, which is what we're going to do first. I also do love this palette. It does come with a mirror. I love traveling with palettes that have mirrors. I hate going places without a mirror. Plus, even when filming, I like to just use the mirror that's on the palette rather than have to look in my, like, big mirror right here. I don't know. It's just me being picky. I'm going to grab a big fluffy brush and dip into the shade Wild Soul, which is like a more mustardy yellow type of color and i'm using this as our base transition shade i will say i love mustard colors like this i think they're so so pretty um i feel like they're definitely more popular in palettes nowadays rather than the past i feel like mustard shades would be so hard to come by like like no brand really released mustard yellow shades like it wasn't popular until the past like year or so um now i love that like a bunch of brands are coming out of them i think they're so freaking pretty and I believe Colourpop already has a mustard yellow shade very similar to this. Um, I have a bunch of their single shadows, and I think the single shadow Tiki is very similar to this. So if you just want this palette for that one shade, um, just buy Tiki, and it's very similar to this mustard yellow Wild Soul shade. Buying a single shadow is definitely a lot cheaper than buying a whole palette, let me tell you. Okay, so there's that first shade laid down. I think it looks really, really nice, super blendable, pigmented. I did have to build it a little bit, but with light transition shades, you typically have to do that anyway. So, like, I'm not complaining. I would rather build a shadow, though, than, like, have it be way too pigmented right away and have to, like, struggle and blend it out. I'd rather just have, like, a nice gradient of pigment rather than too much at one time. So, yeah, there is that first shade laid down. I think it looks really nice. I will say... I'm expecting to like this collection. Like, I know I like Colourpop eyeshadows. I like their ultra glossy lip formula. Not the biggest fan of ultra matte formula, but I just, I have a feeling I'm just gonna like everything in the collection. I don't know why, but I just, I know Colourpop. I know their shadows. Most of the time, they all perform amazing. I rarely ever get, like, a dud from Colourpop, so I'm kind of expecting to like this. It's more about just, like, the colors and... That's really it. <laughs> okay, now taking a more dense fluffy brush, I'm gonna grab the shade Euphoric, which is, like, the bright orange in the palette. And I'm placing that right over Wild Soul, which was that first matte yellow shade. Okay, so there is those two shades blended together. They blend nicely together. I don't see any, like, patchiness or, you know, like, weird, just streaky, murky, weird spots. I don't see any of that. It looks really, really nice. I like the way the two shadows look together. I look like a little bit of a sunset vibe going on. Now taking a more smaller, still fluffy blending brush, but more, like, tapered almost, I'm going to grab the shade Misbehave, which is like a pinky, purpley color. I'm like really bad at describing colors, guys. I'm the worst. Um, but I'm just going to take that on the lid and up into the crease. I don't want to take this color too, too high up. I want to keep it nice and low profile. 
Okay, so there is that purple misbehaving shade on my lid. I have to say I don't really care for that color. Um, not that the color is not pretty, it's just like it was a little bit patchy and you can still see like in my inner corners here. It doesn't look the greatest. Like I definitely had purple shades look more smooth than that. Um, I will say purples and pinks and like those tones are hard to make so I can see maybe why the formula is a little bit different in that color. It definitely took a lot of building and even then it still looks kind of patchy. Not the most pigmented. I'm going to try to build up some more in hopes I can make this look a bit more blended. But as of right now, it doesn't look the best. I, I am going to cover most of this with the uh, shimmery and matte green shades. So it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to use it to build some depth and add some more warmth to my crease. It just kind of sucks that it's not the best in case you guys at home wanted to use that shade, you know, for like an all over lid shade or to make that like your outer corner shade or in your crease like I am. It's not like the best purple ever. I think that's all I want to do with that purple shade. I don't want to like add too much more and make it look really, really crazy. I'm going to kind of just stop where I'm at. Before I go in with the greens, I'm going to go ahead and give myself like a half cut crease with some concealer. So I'm going to take my ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the shade Fair 00. This is like literally white. I just picked this up from ColourPop not that long ago because I wanted to have like a good um, concealer to cut my crease with because I hate using my normal concealer because I feel like I run out of concealer like way too quickly. So I'm just going to take some of that concealer on my So Sue Times Kaylee SK05 blush, blush, brush. It's just a flat concealer brush that I would typically use to cut my crease any other time. I just got this brush for Christmas. Or I should say I got like the whole brush set for Christmas, but whatever. I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through this part because it's not really about cutting the crease today. It's about the eyeshadow and the application of the eyeshadow. Not about me cutting my crease. I'm going to go ahead and just zoom through this. Okay, so there is my half cut crease. Is it perfect? No, but we're going to cover that with eyeshadow, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and dip into the shade Emerald Dream with that same SK05 brush as before. I'm just going to go in with dry pigmentation at first. Like, I'm not going to wet my brush. If I need to wet my brush, I will. Um, I just want to see how the shadow performs without wetting my brush because I know not everybody likes to wet their brush. Um, I personally just always do because I think shimmers perform a million, six times better with a wet brush, but that's just me. But let's go ahead and just use dry pigment. Okay, so there is that Emerald Dream Green Shimmer Shade all over my lid with just a dry brush, no, no wetting the brush, no finger application, just a good old dry brush. And I think it looks really, really pretty. You can see all like the glitters and the sparkles in the shadow, even without wetting your brush. I think it's so amazing. I love how pretty this is. Yeah, you could totally just leave the shade just like this, but I am going to go ahead and apply a second layer with a wet brush, just because I'm a bit extra like that, and I just kind of want to see what it looks like. So there is the shade with the wet brush versus without. Um, I think it makes it a bit more smooth looking, a bit more pigmented. But besides that, really not the biggest difference between these two eyes. You could definitely get away with not wetting your brush. But I'm going to go ahead and just do that to the other side now so I look normal. Now taking a small fluffy brush, this is the Morphe M506. I'm going to pick up the shade Moody, which is the matte deep green in the palette. Ooh, there seems to be a bit of kickback just by even touching that shadow. I'm going to be sure to tap my brush off before I go too crazy in my outer corner with this shade. Because you can always build a shadow up, but you can't take away pigment once you lay it down. I like this color. It's quite pretty. Y'all already know. If you've been subscribed for a minute now, y'all know I love green eyeshadow. I think it's so freaking pretty. Definitely feel like 2019 will be the year of green eyeshadow. I feel like last year's definitely like blues and like oranges together. And I feel like this year it's going to be like green i don't know why but i just have that feeling so as you can see i did get a bit of fallout from that green shade even with tapping my brush off um if you do your eyes first you don't gotta worry about it it's like it never happened you just gotta wipe it away but if you do your face first um i'd be cautious of that green shade because it might ruin your foundation you could of course always put like translucent powder under your eyes if you do do your foundation first um and that will catch some shadow but I just don't like risking that. I'd rather just do my eyes first and then just do the foundation later. I think it looks nicer like that anyways on me. I'm going to go back in with the shade Misbehaving, which is that purple shade, and just blend my edges of the green because it looks a little choppy and harsh right now. I'm going to take this shade right here. I do not know how to pronounce that, and I'm not even going to try because I will butcher it. Um, but it's a nice shimmery... Uh, pale color and I'm just going to use that to highlight my brow bone. The 
a little bit glittery, but it's also, I don't think, meant to be a brow bone highlight. I think it's meant to be an all over lid shade. I'm just kind of using it as a brow bone highlight. Um, I think you probably should use it in a wink for a more natural brow bone highlight, but I want to be a little extra today. All right, I want to give the shimmer on my lid a bit more of a pop, so I'm going to go ahead and use my ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Cusp. This doesn't come with the collection. It has nothing to do with the collab that they did with Karen. It's literally just one of their Super Shock Shadows they sell all the time. Um, I just thought it'd be really cool to add the eyelid because it looks a lot like the green shade on my lid, just a bit more sparkles and more depth added to it. So I'm going to go ahead and take my finger and just place that over top. Of course, this is optional. You don't have to do this. I'm just being a little bit extra. Okay, so there is the top lid all complete. I think it looks super, super pretty. Um, I did have some troubles with my outer corner area and getting that green shade to be pigmented and stick. But I think with just more building, it'll look fine. I'm going to go ahead and do my lashes and base makeup off camera. I will be back to do my lower lash line and also review the lip bundle trio thing. Okay, so I'm now back with the rest of my makeup on. I'm going to go ahead and do my lower lash line really quickly. I'm going to take this little pencil brush from Lexi. This is the... One for one mini round blending brush. I'm gonna grab a mixture of the shades Wild Soul and Euphoric. And I'm just gonna buff these shades on my lower lash line from inner and outer corner. Slightly blowing it out, but not too much. I don't wanna have like a super blown out lower lash line today. Taking a smaller blending brush, this is the Luxie One in One Mini Flat Angle Brush. I'm gonna grab the Misbehave shade, that purple shade. And I'm just gonna put that right against my lash line and blending it into the orange and mustard yellow. Now taking a very stiff pencil brush, I'm going to grab the shade Moody, and that's just going in the outer corner of my lower lash line. I'm not going to take that all the way in like the other shades. And to tie the eye look all together, I'm going to take my ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Teaspoon. It's like a nice emerald green shade. Um, I think it'll just really complement this look. So I'm going to pop that on my waterline. Now adding some mascara to my lower lash line, my eyes will be all complete. All right, so I actually lied. I want to do one more thing to my eyes. I want to add the shade in a wink to my inner corner just to give it some dimension. That didn't really do much, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this Lucio, Lucidi, I don't know how to say it, but just this shade right here in the top left hand corner, I'm gonna add that to my inner corner. There we go, that's the sparkle I was looking for. Much better, okay. Now the eye look is all complete, and I think it looks super, super pretty. I really like the way it turned out. I love, I love the shimmer. I love this blue green shimmer teal color it's so freaking pretty okay now moving on into the lip bundle so like i said before there is two mattes and one glossy lip i'm gonna go ahead and swatch the glossy lip on my lips first the glossy lip is called glass lip okay so here is glass lip all by itself super pretty color it doesn't have a super pigmented base to it um it's more of just like a nice topper gloss it has a very warm sparkly gold shimmer to it very very pretty definitely a warm tone gloss i think it'd be super pretty over just like a nude bullet lipstick but here it is by itself on top of my bare lips this is the shade glass lip okay now i'm gonna swatch the ultra matte lip in the shade suede de coco again don't know if i'm saying that correctly whatsoever but it's just a nude pinky brown tone color here is the color pop times i love sour e ultra matte lip in the shade suede de coco Really pretty, nice everyday shade. It's a little dark on me to be an everyday shade, but if you were a deeper skin tone, it would look beautiful as a nude on you. Um, it still looks pretty on me. I like it, but it's just not my favorite, like, nude. Still really pretty. It's like a nice, deep, brown, warm camel color. I don't know. I really like it. I'm going to add the shade Glass Lip over top so you guys can see what those look like combined. Really pretty color combo. It kind of just made the color look more glossy, which I mean, I expected it to do that. Um, I just didn't know if maybe the warm tones in here would pull more warm on this like brown color, but it looks kind of like the same color, just glossy. <laughs> okay, last but not least, we have the shade Dulcet, Dulce. I don't know how to pronounce it once again. It's like a nice rosy color. So not the best lip application, and with this eye look, it looks a bit crazy like a bit like a clown right now um but I think paired with like a more neutral everyday eye look this would be a lot prettier it just looks a little crazy with the emerald green smoky eye going on I really like it I think it's a really pretty nice just rosy color I'll go ahead and add glass lip over top of this shade as well again just made it a glossier version of itself it does look a bit more pinky toned I will say than before 
but like not by a lot, just like a little smidge of more pinky tone. Um, so yeah, here is the shades Dulce and Glass Lip combined. Okay, if you've been on my channel for a while now, this will come as no shock to you. I'm just gonna take the shade Glass Lip and apply it all over to my lips. Uh, it's a nice, glossy, everyday nude lip. Are you surprised? No. Okay guys, and that was my completed look slash review of the I Love Sarah E Times Colourpop Through My Eyes collection. I think this is an amazing collection. I really, really, really like the eyeshadow palette. I think it's super, super pretty. I wish the outside packaging was, you know, like the unicarton, but that's just my personal preference. Um, the colors and size what really matters, and I think they were beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch some of the shades I didn't get to use today, like uh, Mesmerize, Lomo, and Flex. So there are those shades that we didn't get to use today. I mean, we didn't use a couple more of those as well, but I just want to swatch these ones because they were really, really pretty to me and stood out the most. They were mostly you know, unique looking to me. Especially Flex, that's gorgeous. Ooh. And as for the formula of the shadow palette, um, I thought it was pretty standard for ColourPop. That's about the same as their other palettes, um, which is a good thing. I love ColourPop's palettes. I think they're amazing. I have so many in my collection. It's unreal. I need to kind of like slow down the ColourPop train. As for the lip bundle, I absolutely love the gloss, which I mean, no shocker there whatsoever. I love like any nude glossy lip. Um, the rosy color, the Dulce or Dulcet, I don't know. It's, it's okay, it's pretty. Um, I don't typically wear colors like that, but I think it's really, really pretty. And if you like rosy nude colors, I think you'd love it. Same goes for Suede Coco. It's just a little too dark for me. If it was a bit more lighter and more pale toned, I don't know if it's a good way to describe that color, but if it's just a bit more lighter, I would love it. Obviously, Karen's darker than me, and this color is made for people that are darker than me. But yeah, it's just a little dark for my preference. I don't really like wearing bold lips. I like my nude glossy lips, as I've said a million times today. Um, yeah, just a little bit too dark for me, but I mean, still pretty color nonetheless. And if you like, you know, more matte lips, I think you'll really, really like the formula of this. Be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see more reviews like this in the future. And yeah, I think that's it for today's video. I hope you guys have a blessed day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.